Today we're going to talk about Eleanor of Aquitaine, uh, who's Queen of France, Queen of England, and Queen of Love. So Aquitaine is a region in southwest France. Uh, in, she was born there in the early 1100s. Uh, at that time, France was actually very fragmented. Uh, technically, the king ruled everything, but it was mostly these semi-independent uh, dukes and counts that ruled the area. Uh, the king himself only controlled the very small green area. You see that little circle? Uh, so he didn't have a whole lot of power. Uh, the main power was in the hands of these nobles, uh, in particular uh, to the west, or to, rather to the east in the green area, the Counts of Champagne, to the north, the Duchy of Normandy, which had conquered England at the time, um, the County of Toulouse, that purple area to the south, uh, the red area in the middle, the Counts of Anjou, who were incredibly aggressive and hated by pretty much all their neighbors, and biggest and wealthiest of all, the Duchy of Aquitaine, which is that largest area in the uh, southwest. Uh, Aquitaine ha was part of a southern culture. Uh, they were very different from northern France. They had their own language uh, called Languedoc, or Occitan. Um, it's similar to modern Catalan. Um, they were very big on music and poetry and the arts. Uh, in particular, uh, what were known as the troubadours or uh, minstrels uh, kind of grew out of that area and they were wandering poets and musicians uh, that would go around telling tales of love and uh, warriors. It's also where courtly love came up, uh, which was kind of a practice of kind of a noble ideal of uh, love where a knight or a minstrel would uh, do great deeds or write poems uh, to show his love for some noble lady. Uh, and they would kind of have some sort of emotional relationship, but it didn't really go further than that. Uh, Eleanor herself, uh, she was the daughter of the Duke. Uh, she had a great education. She learned mathematics, uh, astronomy, history, and spoke multiple languages. Uh, her mother died when she was six. Her father died when she was 16 and left her the entire duchy of Aquitaine, making her uh, pretty much the most powerful woman in France. Uh, being 16, uh, the King of France became her guardian, and as all good guardians do, he immediately married her off to his son so that his son could get the Duke of Aquitaine. Uh, pretty much right after doing that, uh, the King of France died, and his son, uh, Prince Louis, became King of France, making Eleanor Queen of France. Um, the king was madly in love with her. She was uh, renowned for her beauty. Um, and she had a lot of influence on him. Uh, in fact, a lot of people at court at that time uh, disliked her. They thought that women should not be involved in politics and that she should not use her influence on the king. Uh, in particular, uh, this one guy, a uh, very charismatic hermit known as Bernard of Clairvaux, uh, actually lectured her on a few times to tell her keep out of politics. It didn't really work. Uh, she had two daughters with Louis, but they were unable to have a son, which was a big deal, uh, because if you couldn't have a son, then you would typically have a succession crisis after the death of the king. Uh, they got into a fight with the Count of Champagne, which was that region to the east, uh, partly on account of Eleanor because the Count of Champagne was trying to block the marriage of her sister. Uh, there are some other issues as well, uh, but she influenced the king to invade. He took part in a terrible massacre, um, which uh, really kind of shook him up afterwards. He felt really bad about it. Uh, and yeah, eventually made peace he was feeling really terrible about this massacre, and so uh, what kings did back then, if they'd done something terrible, 
uh, tried to save their souls by going on crusade. Uh, of course, Eleanor did not want to be left behind. She says, I'm the Duchess of Aquitaine, and I'm going to go along with you, leading my vassals into battle. Um, she did, in fact, uh, lead her people. They got to uh, modern Palestine, where her uncle was uh, ruled the area of Antioch. Uh, he was a great politician, knew all the local politics, uh, and he wanted to engage in a series of small uh, battles that would really help the people around there. Uh, Eleanor's husband, Louis, didn't want to do that. He was like, wanted some great action. Uh, went to besiege Damascus, which turned out to be an ally of the local crusaders. The whole thing ended up being a terrible failure, and so they all went home. <laughs> At that point, Eleanor and Louis had been having uh, a lot of issues, uh, partly over some of the things that happened on Crusade and over their inability to have a son. And so they got divorced, and Eleanor decided that she was going to get married with uh, the Count of Anjou, the county next door, who had just recently gotten Normandy and Brittany and England, and combined with Eleanor's Aquitaine, pretty much now they controlled all of France plus England creating what was known as the Angevin Empire. This, of course, did not make the King of France happy. Uh, she had a bunch of children, which we can skip over a little bit. Uh, she and her new husband, Henry, uh, kind of traveled the empire, ruling it uh, kind of individually. Uh, she set up court in Aquitaine. Uh, there's a kind of a legendary court of love that she set up there where uh, lovers would submit their quarrels to her and she would uh, decide who was right. Also made some general pronouncements about love, one of which uh, she claimed that love cannot exist inside marriage. Uh, <laughs> she also was a big sponsor of troubadours and the, that whole culture. Uh, <coughs> moving very quickly, her sons and her husband got into a bunch of quarrels. Uh, she sided with her sons and organized this huge revolt, almost took down the empire, uh, but she got captured by her husband, who now was pretty mad at her, put her in prison for the next 16 years. Uh, her son, or her husband eventually dies, and her first son's uh, immediate reaction on succeeding to the throne is to release his mother. Uh, the son, his name is Richard. Uh, you probably know him under the name Richard the Lionheart. Um, so Eleanor, she arranges a marriage for him, and Richard uh, wanted to leave on crusade, left his mother in charge of everything back home. Uh, she had to manage all these factions, in particular her other son John, who launched several coups which she was able to block. Richard didn't really like ruling. He uh, spent a lot of time on crusade, got captured on the way back. Eleanor had to raise a ransom for him. Again, a lot of negotiating with the Pope, with the Emperor, with a lot of different uh, kings. Uh, took a long time and a lot of money. She eventually got it done. You probably know this guy. Uh, after Richard died, Prince John, who had done multiple coups that were blocked by his mother, was Finally became king. Um, Eleanor again helped him out a lot on the diplomacy side. Turns out he's kind of a rotten king. Uh, he was a decent administrator, raised a lot of money, but uh, yeah, pretty much everybody hated him. After his mother died, the empire pretty much fell to pieces. The king of France conquered all his land, and he pretty much was only left with England. Uh, so Eleanor was really important to the success of his early reign because afterwards it, everything just fell apart. Uh, finally, just kind of quickly looking at her legacy, she died at age 82, uh, which was incredibly old for that time, uh, had quite an impact. She lived through the reigns of two of her husbands and uh, three of her sons and was probably the most influential woman uh, in the Middle Ages. Uh, incredibly involved in 
the politics of the day, the both internal and uh, diplomacy among European nations. Uh, she was a patron of the arts, particularly the troubadour and minstrel culture. Um, she also uh, pioneered giving self-government to a lot of cities to counteract the effect of the nobles, uh, a trend that would be picked up later on at, towards the end of the Middle Ages. Uh, also, creator of the Angevin Empire, uh, kind of setting the stage for that England v. France uh, war that would go down for pretty much the rest of the Middle Ages and up until modern times. Um, a lot of her sons and her husband oftentimes had hard times with the nobles trying to keep everything in place. Uh, she, again, very skilled at diplomacy, managed to keep things together. Um, and her descendants ended up ruling most of the countries of Europe, uh, kind of like Victoria. She's often known as the kind of grandmother of Europe. And finally, I think the best assessment uh, was given to me uh, while I was setting up this presentation in a coffee shop, and the barista came by and told me, that's one badass lady. <laughs>